The Solomon Islands Parliament is beginning to debate a contentious bill to defer elections. It comes as the Prime Minister of the Pacific Island country intensifies his attack on Australia over its offer to help fund the poll. His foreign affairs reporter Stephen Jedgetts. Hi Stephen, so has the Prime Minister struck a similar tone this morning? Yes, he has, Ros. Manasseh Sukumare has very much picked up from where he left off with his statement uh, a couple of days ago, accusing Australia of interference uh, because it offered to help fund elections which are due to be held in 2023, but which Mr Sukumare wants to push back until 2024. Now, the opposition has raised real concerns about this, saying it's profoundly anti-democratic. The Parliament of Solomon Islands is actually debating this today uh, and it looks like Mr Sokovari is probably going to push it through that Parliament, uh, we believe, by the end of the day. Or that's what it looks like. He does have the numbers. Uh, but as we have been talking about over the last couple of days, uh, the Prime Minister was evidently enraged by Australia's offer to provide funding in order to potentially help the elections stay in 2023, accusing the Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, of foreign interference. And he reiterated that on the floor of the Parliament today. Let's take a listen. The announcement by the Australian Foreign Affairs Minister is seen by the government of Solomon Islands as attempt to directly interfere, Mr Speaker, into our domestic affairs, especially when this is a matter that is before this very house, Mr Speaker. The government will be making diplomatic representation in due course. So does that mean Stephen Hill reject the offer? Well, no. In fact, Manasseh Sogavare, and he seemed to be enjoying himself a little bit uh, when he was doing this, uh, made it very clear that he was quite happy to accept Australia's offer so long as it was for elections in 2024, not 2023. Uh, he briefly dwelt on this for a while, saying that it was going to be very expensive and Australia has made the offer, so it better be prepared, essentially, to stump up. Um, now, I don't think Australia will appreciate Mr Sokovare's approach here, but it's also true that the F Foreign Minister Penny Wong yesterday did make it clear, perhaps in an attempt to leach some of the tension out of this subject, that Australia's offer was not contingent on the elections being held in 2023, uh, but that it would apply if Australia decided, sorry, if Solomon Islands decided to hold elections in 2024 instead. But Mr Sokovare seemed to be enjoying himself, saying that's exactly what would happen and uh, that uh, Australia better be prepared to stump up. And what's the opposition in Solomon Islands had to say? Well, look, the opposition's quite scathing. It says that Australia did nothing wrong here, that it was entirely appropriate for Australia to make it clear that it was going to offer money uh, for the next elections, whether they're going to be held in 23 or in 24. It argues, and it's been arguing in Parliament this morning, that Mr Sokovare's real intention is simply to protract his hold on power, to stay on at least until 2024. Some are even muttering he wants to go beyond that. Uh, either way, the opposition is profoundly unhappy about what's happening here. It says that Mr Sokovare is behaving in an autocratic matter uh, and the fact that he's rejected Australia's offer exposes his real agenda. If it was really about money, they said, then he would have said yes to Australia's offer for next year rather than 2024. But Mr Sogavari is sticking with his plan and Solomon Islands seems to be on that route. Parliament is apparently going to, is, it looks like it's going to pass this later today and uh, when that happens, Mr Sogavari will get his way. Stephen, thank you.